Church, and we especially welcome the guests and visitors that are here with us this morning. As we begin, we simply begin also remembering that God has promised that He is with us. Jesus says, Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with you. So we begin with that promise. Uh, we begin with hymn number 907 in our hymnals, and I invite the congregation to please rise. Thank you. 
sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to, set up, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made that? I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake, grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you, and of your will, and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us, and has given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To, them, to those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God, and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. We continue on page 3 of our worship folder as we read together the intro it. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his saints, but let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness mean righteousness and peace to each other. Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps away. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation.
all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he departed from him and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing the twelve yoke of oxen in front of him, and he was with the twelve. Elijah passed by him and cast his cloak upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back, for what have I done to you? And he returned from following him and took the yoke of oxen and sacrificed them and boiled their flesh with the yokes of the oxen and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and went after Elijah and assisted him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Galatians chapter 5. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalry, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Again, such things. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter. Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him, who went and entered a village of the Samaritans, to make preparations for him. But the people did not receive him, because his face was set towards Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. And they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Amen. 
confess our common Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed found on page 192 in your hymnal. We confess, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Our sermon hymn is hymn number 856 in the hymnal.
grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our gospel, our, our sermon text for today is the, the second lesson, the epistle lesson that we read earlier from Galatians chapter 5. And it's there in your bulletin or worship folder on page 5 if you want to see it, because there's a lot there that's really, really good. Not as if any of the other parts of the Bible are bad. No, that's not the point. There's just so much is good here. For freedom, Christ has set us free. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Now, we know this and, and love this concept of freedom, right? This concept, we have songs about it. We have patriotic songs about freedom. We have songs about our life. We have pop songs about freedom. Freedom. All right. Um, we have. We love this idea of freedom. We love it when we look at our parents and say, "Are there any more chores for me to do?" And your parents say, "You're free. You are gone. Right? You are out. You are free. So go and run and, and be free. Right? Yet we understand this. And so gee, uh, God speaks through Galatians chapter five. He says, "For freedom, Christ has set you free." So don't submit again to a yoke of slavery. For freedom, Christ has set you free. We said earlier in our worship service, the forget or the acts of the confession of sins, we said we knew that we were sinful. We had sinned against God in thought, word, and deed, and we had sinned against our neighbors and ourselves. And, and we had heard God say through through the pastor, right? Our Father has had mercy on us. And our Father has given His only Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. And our Heavenly Father, for the sake of His Son, Jesus Christ, forgives us all our sins. You are forgiven. Christ has set you free, right? Forgives you all your sins. To all who believe on the name of Jesus Christ, you are a child of God. You have the Holy Spirit, and those who believe and are baptized are saved. You have been free from the punishment of sin. Why? Because Jesus Christ took that punishment to the cross, took the punishment that was ours for every sin, for every sin. Now, if you're thinking of all of your sins, and they might be great, right? Um, now, add every other human's sin of all time, all the sins that have been committed, that are being committed, and all the sins that yet will be committed before Jesus comes again, Jesus has paid the price for every sin, all of that darkness on him, and you are set free from the punishment of your sins, for freedom Christ has set you free. Now what? What are you going to do? What are you going to do with your freedom, right? Mom and Dad say, you're free. You are on your bikes. You're across town in three seconds flat, right? When you hear you are free, you are running to get your wallet to go out on a Friday night, right? When someone says you are free, you, uh, you drop your child off at college. And they're going to stay there with no parents around. You walk away saying, my, God, my child is now free to do whatever he wants. What are you afraid he's going to do? <laughs> you are set free. But now God says in Galatians 5, but don't use that freedom to go back to a rotten way of life. Do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. So then we skip 12 verses in the middle here of Galatians 5, which is another sermon altogether. And so he says, brothers... You were called to freedom, but don't use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh to, to indulge, to think about me, 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 to say, well, how can I uh, serve my desires? How can I obey my thirst? How can I find a way to just go back to the way of life which God has no desire for me to live? Verse 13, he says, but through love, serve one another. He is writing to Christians. The Apostle Paul is writing to the Christians in, in Galatia. And he's telling Christians, by the way, Christians, I know 
you just as well as I know my own sinful nature, we should not go back to the sins that we so much desire to be involved in. Because Christians are no different from anyone else. We will sin. We'll find ways to sin. We'll almost invent, we'll try to invent new ways to sin, right? Because we're no different from anyone else. We will find a way. And so even he has to tell the Christians in Galatia, don't just go back to sinning. Serve your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. Because verse 15, he has to tell the church in Galatia, you're just tearing each other up. If you bite and devour each other because you will be consumed by one another. Dear Christians, don't kill each other. Right? Dear Christians, don't destroy each other because of your sinfulness. You have been set free. So love and serve one another. Love your neighbor as yourself. He puts this very clearly here. You have been set free by Christ, so now there are two ways to go. Abandon the way that Christ would have us live. Or live in service toward one another. Live according to the Spirit. Walk in God's ways. He makes this pretty clear here in Galatians chapter 5. He, he tells us about the desires of our heart. He calls them the works of our flesh. These things that we might not, that we might want to do, that are not the desires of the Holy Spirit, not the desires of your Heavenly Father. But he says, no, the works of the flesh are evident in our lives. And here's the list in 19 and 20. And 21, it continues. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, and sorcery. So being involved in false religions, being involved in the occult. Enmity, strife, or jealousy, finding anger and strife with others, with our fellow man, our neighbor, our family. Fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, and divisions. Dissensions and divisions might to me seem to be the same thing, but he makes a distinction. And 21, envy, drunkenness, and even, dear Christians, don't get involved in orgies and things like this either. He has to remind them what are the works of the flesh and maybe the temptations of the world around them in Galatia. And Christians, we are to be called out of this. The first few of these, you can see, these are trying to satisfy our own desires, our own indulgences for the, the pleasures of the flesh. Can we say that? He calls us away from this. He calls us away from false religion and the occult, from idolatry and sorcery, from setting something else, something else up as, as God in our lives, something else up as a spiritual authority for us, some other way to have spiritual power. And then he calls us away just from fighting, biting, and devouring one another, from backstabbing, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy. And then comes back again to how we might fall into the desires of the flesh, drunkenness, and orgies. He calls us away from these. He even reminds us Christians themselves may fall into these, may be struggling with these things. We might know the sins of our past are on this list somewhere, or we might say, I've got sins that didn't make this list. There's in another list in the scriptures. We know what we've done. Sometimes we weren't aware of what we were doing or how far we were straying from the will of God. Sometimes we didn't know God. Jesus had not come into our lives. And this was the way of life of what it was before we knew Christ. And he's saying, Christ has now set you free. You know what he's done for you. Don't fall back into a way of life that is apart from Christ. But he puts before us these fruits of the Spirit. This is how we live. This is what earlier in verse 13 would be loving and serving one another through love and joy and peace where the fruits of the or the works of the flesh the working of the flesh is to treat myself to hold myself above above others to hold myself against others to be striking out or pushing back the works of the flesh are about me but starting with love 
fruits of the Spirit are about how we live with others in love, in joy, and in peace. In faith, uh, and I got to see the list here patience, and kindness, and goodness, and faithfulness, and gentleness, and in self control. Your, your challenges are probably different from mine, where we are on the list of the fruits of the Spirit, where I say, I think I need more help here with this thing or that thing. Lord, give me patience is a common prayer. We often forget that we need self-control. Lord, help me to be gentle and kind to others. This is the life God puts before us. And it's not a life of me. It's not a life of isolation. It's not a life of setting myself apart or attacking others. But it is a life that draws near to others in love. It is a life that expresses God's love to them in kindness and, and gentleness. It is a life that says it's not about my passions. No, those are to be brought under self-control. So that my anger does not come forth. My desires are not most important, but how Jesus can serve my neighbor through my actions and through my words and through my attitude. For Christ has set us free. Now what are you going to do with that freedom? He says, don't just fall back again. Move forward. Take that freedom in finding ways to love and serve your brother, your sister, your family your neighbor, your co-worker, your whoever it is. Look for the, how God's will can, be come, can come into your lives. How can we care for every life from the womb to the tomb? How can we care for every life that has life? How can we care for those that are experiencing a loss of life? How can we care for those who don't know how to move forward in life? God gives us the fruits of the Spirit. The works of the flesh are what we do according to our own desires. The fruits of the Spirit are what come out of us naturally as we live in Christ, as the Spirit grows in us and works His goodness through our life. They grow like fruit. They're not works that have to be pursued. They come to us as we live in Christ. The joyful ways to live. Because we know it's not about me about how God has served me and set me free and now I can be of some benefit to someone else through what he's done for me my life can now be of some good in serving one another to help their life be improved or cared for or nourished or just loved that is the life God has given me what is it to live as a Christian well Christ has set you free Christ has set you free now as a Christian. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We rise and sing the offertory that is found on page 192.
Let us rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Dear God of the church, you give pastors and all church workers to proclaim your steadfast love, to announce freedom from slavery to sin, and to point all toward the cross of Christ. Bless their faithful work, that people may know Christ and rejoice in their salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, grant that our homes would serve to foster within us the fruit of the Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all power and might, give insight and wisdom to our leaders, direct them to punish evildoers, reward the righteous, and strive for peace. Be with our nation now in the midst of new changes, that you would uphold your will, that you would hold back uh, strife from those who may be in disagreement and move forward with those who care for every life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord of refuge, hear our petitions for healing and strength and comfort for all who are in need of your care and for all whom we pray. Be near them as the refuge of the weary and the God who preserves his people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our Lord Jesus Christ, grant that the whole church might fix our eyes on him. Teach us the way of the cross. Remove hindrances and distractions from us. And do not let the freedom we have in the gospel become an excuse for sin and vice, but an opportunity to love and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue on page 194 in your hymnal with the preface. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, 
Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do, in, this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
difference of your sins. on page 199 with the Nunc Dimittis. Please rise. Oh, 
who are uh, guests or visitors with us here today. It's a pleasure to have you. Uh, I'd like to direct your attention to the announcement pages uh, ever so briefly. Uh, one is, uh, the first one, those two volunteers needed. Uh, you can read there that I'm wanting to find someone who can help us uh, kind of keep the database, the membership database up to date, but because you guys move around and you change your phone numbers and email addresses all the time, right? And because we have new people at times and things like that, um, so someone that would be willing to be friendly and go, hi, when's your birthday, right? You know, hi, where do you live, uh, right? Uh, and just kind of meet someone who's willing to go around and say, I'm trying to update these things for pastor, right? And then also who's willing to kind of get that entered in. I'm looking for a pair so it can be a team. Uh, so if you think that's you or one that you might be one, but someone else, you know, whatever, if you want to talk to me about that, uh, I'm not looking for a commitment today, but if you kind of let this be on your mind for a few days or for a few weeks or whatever, uh, that would sure be a good help uh, to the church to have those records kept up to date, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, and trustworthy, that you're not going to, you know, take our information to identity theft or anything. And we're not, and then we're not doing anything wrong with it too, right? So if anybody's willing to do that, you know how our records they have to be kept up, and so I just figured, ask if someone's willing to help with that. Um, do you see the other announcements here? Pastor Miguel Sanabria has been called, and he has accepted the call to be the associate pastor for Hispanic ministry at Emmanuel, and his installation will be on uh, July, I almost said January, uh, 9th. So that's uh, two Saturdays from now. So uh, please take a look at that announcement. The other announcements are certainly always important. The memory verse, if, if that is, is for you to try to commit uh, key verses to memory, that you can remember these good promises of God and good directions. Um, on the prayer list, uh, I'm not going to say anything for the whole YouTube uh, who's watching right now or whatever, but uh, please keep Robin hefty in your prayers. She's going through a really hard time right now. Uh, okay, um, now uh, something happened on Friday, right? Yes, it did, right? And it's a Frank book. I'm not ready to discuss that right here, right now, and take whatever. If I'm not sure what else is, what what else I can say. Uh, not that I'm prevented, but what else needs to be said about it? Uh, we'll try to see what some of the ramifications are to our country through all this. Uh, but if you have any questions about the Bible's teachings about everything, just feel free and let me know. All right? Or if you say, we need to talk about this uh, so that everybody knows, uh, just let me know. I'm not going to try to tell you who to vote for. That's not my job. And I'm not going to try to tell you about laws. That's not my job. I'll tell you about the Bible and God's grace in Christ. Uh, anyone else? Any other comments or questions? Yeah. Me. Yeah. Friday, you're married to me. 50 years this last Friday. Well, God's blessings to you and to Marjorie. That is wonderful. 50. Halfway done. Yes. <laughs> St. Marjorie, right? Now, uh, so June is a month for many uh, weddings, and, and, and so there's many anniversaries. Uh, and now, so let's take this time, since we're doing this, just to celebrate every marriage for everyone. Now, uh, some poor soul is going to be celebrating their 26th anniversary up here in the front row. Yeah, don't remember. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, kind of a, yeah. She's married to kind of a shifty, worthless guy, but uh, she's stuck in there for 26 years. So, 
That's all. I'm, I'm humbled. Uh, so, uh, so we do. But uh, 26 is nothing on 50. Congratulations, Carl and Marjorie. Anyone else? Go Bolts. Uh, it, it, I guess there's a game somewhere, right? Uh, so I don't know if he prefers Tampa Bay over Colorado uh, or one sport over another, but go ahead and pray for your favorite ball game. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> all right. Uh, anyone else? We invite you to stay for the the, the cookies and whatever the, the the yummies, but most especially also to stay for uh, one another, just to give have some time with one another. God's blessings on your day and your week. <laughs> Yeah, let's say good morning to everybody with me. Um, say good morning. Hi, good morning all. <laughs>